What's good, y'all? It's the Do Machettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. So excited about this video. If you're new to us, and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. Marriage. One of the most important events in a person's life, where two people profess their undying love to one another, vowing to stay together till death do them apart. With two individuals, under God's grace, unifying into one celebrated by a grand ceremony and party known as a wedding. Mm -hmm. But this is the Balkan. <laughs> The Balkans indeed are a magical place where the average person's diet consists of a slab of meat, coffee, and five cigarettes, and all the laws of physics cease to exist. As such, it is no surprise that weddings here are a bit different. Being in a region that has been plagued by war, death, destruction, and presidents coming out of a fridge, a wedding is one of the events that brings enormous amounts of hope and reason for celebration. Thus, unlike the ones in the West, which are only celebrated for a couple of hours before a couple officially start their countdown to divorce, in the Balkans a wedding is not for soft little sissies, and is celebrated the entire day by the end of which one's liver will be more shriveled up than a mudskipper in the Sahara, and you'll wake up in the hospital hooked up to dialysis. The celebration will usually start in the morning, where the most important okay. character of the event, the best man, or more colloquially the kum, kume, kume, yutsuki, maximume, comes to the groom's house and as soon as he's through the door, he starts drinking. After he's had enough alcohol Girl, the, with wait, the groom and on the, po on the wedding day, I'll drink it, well, it's before just the actual, after, right? Yeah, right. so before the I do's and kisses and hugs and celebrations, y'all already drunk. Mm, okay. So, so the coom has got a, a crazy part. He's he he turning up for everybody. Yeah. So usually we'll have like a bachelor party or a bachelorette party. So you know before the night, the before, night before. before. Right. 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 Yeah. So but y'all getting it started early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I, you gotta think about it. We kind of got like a a little same vibe here because if we doing it the night before, we taking it into the next day. Yeah. But we're not going in it drunk. Per se, maybe hangover. A little maybe bit. a little hungover yeah. with a little laughter, you know, in, in yeah. the crowd because of how party the party was. But yeah. but okay. they say no, we starting at eight o'clock in the morning. Straight up. I like it. But that neither of the two can no longer drive, the entirety of the groom's family heads to the bride's house. On oh, their wait. way there, they're followed by a trumpet band known as the Tribachi, who will play the entire time so that the entire neighborhood goes deaf and the bride can hear the two drunkards coming. After they reach her house, the coom, like the Giga Chad he is, will walk into her humble abode and start begging her and her bride of honor, known as the Kumitsa, to let her out, being the stuck up bitches they are, they'll refuse. So then, the coom, getting rich off of crypto and placing his bets on 27 red in roulette, will take out a fat stack of cash and start haggling with the kumitsa to buy the bra- We've seen this before. Mm-hmm. In a West African, uh, I don't know which country, I forgot, but a West African culture where yeah. the bride acts like she's not pleased with the money. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's similar. Yeah, it's more so uh, as well, she can't smile. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When, yeah. she, when she smiles, that's when everything... I mean, that's part of it, but they have other ways they do it as well, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but the ones we have seen, you know? If the coom has superhuman riz and is an avid fan of Farming Simulator, he'll straight up bring up an entire tractor tire worth several thousands of euros to trade in for the bride. After the kumita sells her best friend for what she's worth, the bride will come out, and some madman from one side of the family will take out a gun and start shooting in the air to celebrate, while the trumpet band continues shredding and exacerbating the hearing loss of the entire street. Upon which, both of the families will take some some more shots of hard liquor right. that grandpa brewed in the backyard and slowly start making their way to the church for the procession. Now, the church procession, if you're Serbian, is pretty standard, like anywhere else in the world. 
You come in, the priest says what he needs to, you give your vows, standard shit. Except for that the priest puts on a crown on the bride and the groom. However, if you're Hungarian, not so much. For some godforsaken reason, the priests at Hungarian weddings like to use the ceremony to LARP as if they're on the Joe Rogan podcast and get into schizo ramblings about migrants, divorce, the upcoming world war, wokeism in America, and the declining youth. These guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do it. Right? So he basically up there preaching. <laughs> on the wedding day. On the wedding day. Man. So do he keep it on topic at all? Or is it more like really what he's saying? Oh no. See, see this, we didn't pay you for this, sir. We paid you to marry us. Okay. And let us go on by our way. Cause what what they doing in America got to do nothing nothing to do with who's about to get married today. Okay. All right. Will just keep going on and intersplicing things about God while rambling about the most random shit ever that your grandpa wouldn't even bring up on your family gatherings. Mm-hmm. All the while, the guests are trying to keep a serious face on. At one wedding, the priest brought up how some Indian researchers were studying the Hungarians and discovered how they were actually the first ever people in the world, and uh, that in fact, the Hungarian nation and race are the greatest one walking the earth. After the Hungarian ceremony okay. would be finished in the church, everyone would go outside. The married couple coming out last would then throw either candy or coins at the guests. More often than not, like in the camera lens of the wedding photographers. The funny thing is, the local homeless population always gather around the church whenever they hear wedding bells. So as soon as the coins start getting thrown, they rush to pick up as many as they can and then scurry away. And after the church ordeal is done, is when the real fun begins. For some reason, that even after 24 years of wandering this godforsaken earth, I still don't understand, Balkaners always, and I mean always, hold their wedding reception in the most kitsch event hall that can usually be found in the most ghetto, rundown part of town. Where even the most ruthless hitmen from the crypts would be scared shitless to enter. And if it's not in the ghetto, then it's located in some industrial part of the city where just spending five minutes is enough to develop, uh, I don't know, carcinoma. Now, these places, although located in Asia... Is it because of how they party? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We right. saw at the beginning no. how they was going crazy. Yeah, The no, jumping on the tables and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. need to be right there so they could, Makes you know, sense. have fun worry-free. Worry-free. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. A part of town and on the outside seeming like Minecraft warehouses, on the inside they are filled with some of the most kitsch modern furniture imaginable you'd think came out of a Russian oligarch's house and Whoa. the interior is larger than the observable universe. Which I guess is necessary considering on average between 100 to 200 people attend a Balkan wedding. Hell, sometimes even over 300 if the newlyweds really want to flex on their village. Of course, no Balkan wedding hall would be complete without live entertainment, which usually comes in the form of a 40-year-old turbofolk singer who's had more Botox injected into her face that she physically can no longer express any emotion, while her ass makes Kim Kardashians look as if she has a Japanese cool girl. The singer is followed by a band of a couple of severely out of shape middle-aged men who play the keyboard and the accordion. And as you all can tell, the only music they'll play is Balkan Brain Rock, aka Turbofolk, which after hearing once, you'll think there's no greater offense to music and God. But after five shots, you'll go... Oh, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Listen, at hey. this point, after watching y'all in y'all schools, it's just one big party. Y'all don't care about nothing and nobody. We the have fun. Up. The turn That's up it. is real. The turn up is real. <laughs> y- y- y'all gonna make it happen. <laughs> And think it is the best thing in the world and nothing else comes even close to it. However, on the off chance that the newlyweds don't host their reception at a wedding hall, then most likely the wedding will be held in some village house or ranch in the middle of bump nowhere which has been converted to an ethno house restaurant and is ran by three old fat women who do everything from cooking to the cleaning and catering. In that case, instead of playing turbo folk, there's a good chance that instead there will be a traditional band, or if you're extremely lucky, a gypsy band that will play the greatest music you'll ever hear in your life. (laughs) 
Either way, no matter Crazy. what music is playing, every single one of the guests will be completely drunk before Airport. even the first chord is done playing. Which is no surprise, considering that the majority of the gifts brought by the guests are alcohol, which the newlyweds will immediately open and serve everyone with. Alongside the bottles brought in from guests and that have been provided by the caterers, the legendary wooden flask Rakia will also be served, which has been sitting in the deepest parts of the basement for years aging and growing ever more potent in abv this bottle so far man um yeah y'all wait for weddings and y'all love weddings <laughs> I, I really believe y'all love weddings the way oh, he's yeah. expressing it and how you guys come together and the way y'all get drink the way y'all get drink the way y'all drink and marry and have fun you can't go wrong with it yes i mean from the early morning they turned up Bruh. i love how they come on. go to the, the the what is it the the coon goes to the groom's house aka the best man you, you know, just clicked in this part of the video yes and they they all go there t together yeah 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 like a little big party you know mm -hmm. i like that mm -hmm. we'd love to see a vlog like that though Easily recognizable as like any important Balkan artifact, it carries the coat of arms of whatever mental asylum the newlyweds had the misfortune to be born in. Of course, no Balkan wedding would be complete without food. When the guests first come to the hall, they're served with the pre-pre-appetizer, which usually consists of confectionery sweets such as Mozart balls, chocolate mini cakes, wafer cookies, and kifle, which usually the matrix of the family spent the entire day making the day before. After the first initial round of drinking is done, the guests are then served with the appetizer, which is a shit ton of cold cuts, cheese, spread, and of course, Russian salad which is more mayonnaise than salad, but no important celebration the Balkans is complete without it. Then after that comes the main course, which is either sour soup with lemon, chicken breast, veggies and sour cream, or soup with galushka dumplings, which then is finally preceded by ungodly amounts of barbecue from every animal imaginable, which will lie on a couple of measly leaves of lettuce and be topped with a fuckload of fries. And if you're from God's chosen country, Hungary, then alongside this you're also served a bowl of guyash as well, because obesity is a national sport there. Mi lehet az oka annak, hogy ennyire sok az elhízott ember, és hogy egyre több és több... Miért kurva a legjobb ország a világon Yo. vagyunk? Mi a fasz a demokráció? Orbán bácsi! Orbán bácsi! And then finally comes a dessert. Naturally, like in any wedding, this will be a multi-layer wedding cake. But what's different compared to other weddings is that instead of everyone just eating one cake, the guests also bring their own one layer cakes they made the day before for everyone to share. So then, on top of all the previous exorbitant amounts of food, there's also a metric ton of cake to pick and choose from as well. After all the food has been dealt with and everyone has developed type 2 diabetes, everyone returns to drinking and regular festivities. Except in Hungary. Now, for other Balkaners, as I mentioned before, the kum is the most important player at the wedding. In Hungary, although still important, he is relegated and the main man of the show is the Vufi. The Vufi essentially serves as the wedding organizer and is sort of like the host that entertains the guests and makes sure that everything goes smoothly. Unlike the other guests who will wear basic outfits like a suit and tie or tuxedo, the Vufi comes to the wedding wearing traditional Hungarian clothes and carries an excessively large stick which is decorated with a bunch of other ribbons he got from Sick each culture. wedding he organized, serving oh, as cool. badges of honor. And and after everyone has been fed and their thirst for jahim juice has been satiated, the VUT will then step in and organize several games. Now, these games can range from a variety of different forms. Some of the most popular ones are where the couple has to sit against one another and exchange their shoes. And then the Vufi interrogates them by asking them personal questions about which one of them does something more. And to answer, they have to raise the shoe of their partner. Another oh, is like when that. the Vufi orders the guest to try and steal the bride's shoe throughout the day and present it to him. To get it back, then the parents or bride either have to do a challenge, such as sing or drink more alcohol. Either way, no matter the game, it will always involve either alcohol or something with feet because for some reason every Vufi has an unexplainable foot fetish. Finally, oh after midnight strikes, more food is brought out again, the Serbs shoot more guns in the air, and the party goes on until 3 or 4 a.m. If there were any kids, by this time they'd all fall asleep on several chairs put together, 
and be completely out despite the music blasting harder than an ACDC concert. By the end of it all, right. when everyone is getting ready to go home, all the excess food gets packed up in Tupperware and handed out to the guests and the wedding finally comes to an end. And yeah, that would be your typical Balkan wedding. Have you ever been to one? What has been your experience? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if Alright, yeah, we're gonna stop right there. Make sure you guys check this channel out. Yeah, y'all go hard, bro. So obviously, I feel like there's a lot of similarities, um, a lot of drinking. So y'all best man, do he do he remains drunk the entire day? Oh, he's still even, even to the even to the the gaming and all that stuff, or is it more like? He sobers up, then get drunk again. Child, he in the corner somewhere taking a nap. He can't be in the corner. He, can, he still got to <laughs> orchestrate the whole show. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, and yeah, I think it's pretty cool. They got a relationship. The yeah. best man and the wife. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because yeah. he's orchestrating everything and he's able to ask those personal questions mm -hmm. that only he knows. Yeah, and the... Oh, I forgot the name of the man who does the, the games and all that. The Vote, vote Fee? Yeah. Vote yeah, Fee, something game. like that. Yeah, yeah, this seems like a fun time, okay? Of course. You want every wedding you go to to be fun. Weddings are not meant to be boring. No, it's not. You are celebrating love, okay? Something is always I happening like at a wedding. And y'all, yeah. y'all make sure something is happening. Yeah. Nah, stop. Like, <laughs> y'all make sure something Let happening. us know the funniest thing that has ever happened at a wedding that you went to. Yeah, let's say Let's hear it. All right, let's chat in the comment section. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.